Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I'm the host and the visionary of the Valder Beebe show, God Talk. Some people talk to God and others believe that God talks to them. Join us in conversation with authors, religious clergy, metaphysicians, and regular people like you and I and God Talk. God Talk is a podcast available on FM Radio, Roku TV, and online. Subscribe at ValderBBShow.com. You can also subscribe at YouTube.com slash ValderBBShow. Join the conversation of God Talk. I'll see you there. Good day and welcome back to the Valder BB Show as I move to my next guest, Dr. Brian McNeil. He's a spokesperson for the American Urology Association and he's chief of urology. Dr. McNeil, welcome to the Valder BB Show. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Valder. I'm excited to speak with you. Well, despite the great strides in prostate cancer care over the past several years, I'm being uh, uh, told that there are racial disparities that persist. Now, one of my listeners wanted me to ask you, what do you mean in racial disparities in medicine? They understand racial disparity, but they say they didn't understand it in medicine. Racial disparities exist in all sorts of things, especially medicine. And if you want to just look at racial disparities, just consider different racial groups. You have one condition, a health care condition, and that health care condition can imp impact people in those various racial groups differently. Um, with regards to prostate cancer, while we're talking today, the risk of prostate cancer is about one in eight for all men. But if you're African American, that risk goes up to one in six. If you have a family history, the risk is even greater. And prostate cancer accounts for about one in five of all new cancer diagnoses in Hispanic men. So if you're fighting a disease, you're also fighting society in a sense. Well, depending on the way you look at that, it all, it all depends on context and your viewpoint, but you can look at it that way. Is there racial disparities in the utilization of the new therapies that come out look like medicine would want to just get everybody well? Well, I think that when, you know, new discoveries are made, they're made for people and people don't create things for one particular ethnic group. However, you have to educate the populace on the options available, and then there has to be access to care. And I think that that's where we can do a better job in the education and also in the access sector. How has COVID-19 intersected with what we're talking about, uh, prostate cancer and racial disparities? So if you think about it, there were some areas which were very vulnerable um, you know, to healthcare disparities, which led to different outcomes. Those uh, vulnerabilities have worsened during the COVID-19 pandemic. What we found is that looking at urban areas compared to non-urban areas, urban areas hit particularly hard with the COVID-19 pandemic, have you know, had resources diverted from cancer care to the care of COVID-19. And that has placed men, um, especially men from communities of color, at terrible risk of uh, prostate cancer because of lack of screening and a lack of access to surgery. We've already got a problem with men in general not going to the doctor. So how do we get a man to get screened for prostate cancer if, 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 if they're so hesitant about going to see their physician? I'll tell you this. Men between the ages of 55 and 69 of average risk should have a conversation with their doctor about whether or not they're appropriate candidates for prostate cancer screening. If you're a man at higher risk, say you're African American, you have a family history of prostate cancer, or you have a family history of breast cancer, you should have that conversation earlier on. And when you think about whether or not to get screened for prostate cancer, don't only think about yourself, think about your loved ones. I lost my father due to severe, aggressive prostate cancer when I was 15 years old. He couldn't come to my basketball games, my track meets. He didn't see me graduate from high school. So think about this. Think about not only yourself, but what you could be leaving behind. I'm so sorry about the loss of your father, but maybe that's a wake up call for some listener in the audience. I want to thank you for sharing that personal note. Where can people get more information on what we discussed today? 
please go to the Urology Care Foundation website, urologyhealth.org. There's lots of great information there. Dr. McNeil, continue making a difference because uh, if you keep hammering at home, it's got to hit somewhere. And thanks for being my guest on the Valder BB Show. You're welcome. Take care. Hi, I'm Valder BB. I host the Valder BB Show broadcast on radio and television. And this is my phone pouch. My phone pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands free, pocket free, purse free even belt free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com.